Well, um, we have to start somewhere. Um, I think it's part of the law now that people who occupy a public office uh, will declare their assets. I don't think that has been removed since the days of the military administration, especially with the Mohammed regime. So all our generation that occupied um, positions in government um, have declared their assets. So it's not difficult if subsequent governments are serious about tackling uh, corruption to find out those that became ministers, governors, heads of state, you know, and other strategic, uh, other first titles and so on, uh, the investigation is very easy. So, what I would say is that uh, it's a question of implementation of the existing law. Let us fire to Nigeria leadership that he will base his uh, manifesto, let me put it that way, or campaign on religious or even tribal basis. But uh, if somebody wants to be a counselor in a local government, where people are predominantly of certain religious persuasion or ethnicity, then he can afford to do that. But not when you aspire, you know, to any constituency, whether it is a um, uh, House of Assembly, Representative, Senate, Governorship, and uh, especially the President of the country, you can't base it on tribalism and uh, religion. Because from the moment you decide that, you have already lost. Because uh, Nigeria, the constitution of Nigeria is very clear. There was a time my statement was misinterpreted. This was in there to south. A certain sheikh from Sokoto who spent 13 years in Saudi Arabia when he came back home to Sokoto, went back home to Sokoto, he wrote a book on Sharia. And he drove all the way from Sokoto to Daura, in Kaduna State, my hometown, and asked me to go and chair the launching of the book. I went, and uh, the real personalities of Sokoto were there, including the Sultan then, uh, Machido. And um, I suspected even uh, President Shagiri was there. So after launching the book, I was asked as the chairman of the occasion to comment. And uh, I was intellectually inadequate to comment on that book because I lacked the depth to really comment on it. And I told, uh, I think I told the audience the truth that I could not comment on the book. But uh, since this is on Sharia, partisan politics will soon be allowed in the country. And so Kuto people know their people. Let them vote for people that will work for them, that will hold a trust. And there, this day, within a week, also came out with this headline that Buhari said, Muslims should not vote for Christians. Now that is ridiculous. The reporter is a Yoruba by tribe. He is a Muslim. He didn't and still doesn't speak Hausa or understand it. Uh, he was not in Sokoto. How did he come up with the story? It must have been Muslims' audience. When I decided to go into fights and politics, somebody dug that story and he said it. This is what happened. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria allows the citizens of this country that are 18 years and above, when there was no limit, to vote and be voted for. 
So to me, fundamental rights are the most important thing. Mm. So if the constitution of Nigeria has defined who is to stand for election and made a political party the platform, why should anybody start uh, restricting Nigerian citizens outside the context of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? And if you follow Nigerian history from independence to now, most of the people who led the country or became minister or something, they were never after 50 years, including myself when I was head of state, including IBB when he became head of state. I not to talk of Gawan who was 32 when he became head of state, not to talk of Murtala, maybe Ironsi, Ironsi, you know, was my But the civilians from Tafa of Alewa uh, to Gawan, uh, to Murtala, to Shagiri himself. When Shagiri became a minister, he was not up 30 years old himself and my and so on. So all this uh, panic about generational change, why should the country be denied experienced people, you know, to participate since it's within the constitutional value? Why? Let, let Nigerians decide. That's why our emphasis in our party, the Congress for Progressive Change, is for free and fair election. Mm. Free and fair election. Let the Nigerian choose. It's not a big deal. I, I, I joined partisan politics 15th April 2002. From then I had what is called the Buhari organization. We had uh, an organization which uh, reflect our own philosophy, you know, on real democracy, you know, and social service, social justice. Um, and this we believe included internal democracy in the fighters. Um, and so far we operated within five documents. The most important one being the constitution itself. From there, the INEC uh, Act was, was dragged. And one of the important things of uh, INEC uh, responsibilities is to register political association into political parties. And then before each election, there is an electoral act. There is an electoral act in 2002 for the 2003 election. There is the electoral act of 2006 for 2007 election. Now we have the Electoral Act of 2010 against the 2011 election. This is uh, uh, within which we have to work these five, these five documents. So there is no problem. It's absolutely clear uh, how this polity is going to be uh, conducted. So uh, anybody who did uh, anything outside that certainly is going against the law. And that was why um, between 2003 and 2008 we were in court for 15 months. But there we are. But it's very clear. Mm. There are no ambiguity about uh, uh, <coughs> the processes of democratization in Nigeria. This is a loyal friend and a colleague, a very competent, tough, hard-working, intelligent uh, person. Very, very loyal indeed. I think the country lost him, not only me, I know. May his four soul rest in perfect peace. Um, secondly, you talked about uh, 50 years of independence. Um, it's very disappointing. The most disappointing aspect of it is the leadership of the country. Up to now, nobody has come near the first set of pre independence leadership. That's the first republic. Subsequent leaders, uh, none of us, because I'm one of them, are near that first set. 
as far as competence is concerned. Um, I think this competence was brought about by commitment. Uh, if you look at what uh, uh, happened in the First Republic under uh, well, the Prime Minister, Sao Kachafa Baliwa, if you see what they did in the regions in the West, Chief of Aolo, Education, Social Services, uh, in the Eastern region, and Azik, and then the North, the vast North, and as the Sardana, their education, uh, agriculture, uh, agro based industries, you know, the textiles, the oil mills, you see, uh, how they manage the country was, was, uh, was very, very weak revenue base. You see, but they started the infrastructure, education, and you know how uh, they continue to <coughs> improve the railways. If you could recall, mm -hmm. I think from Bochi to my degree, extension of the railways and so on. And at least they have been efficiently run. Uh, there is power was adequate relative to the requirement of the industries of, of that time and so on. And you try to compare it uh, with what happened and the amount of money we realize. As I said so often in other places, we don't have railways now, we don't have airways, we don't have uh, shipping line, virtually we have no electricity. Uh, uh, consequently, the, uh, there is collapse of education, of, uh, of uh, industries, Lack of, uh, and, uh, lack of employment, hence crime in the cities and so So really, it's, it's very, very disappointing. The only thing we have is that we have managed to remain one country. Mm. But otherwise, the institutions uh, virtually have collapsed. No social services, education now. Uh, people can hardly afford to educate their children. People don't have uh, adequate health care. They don't even have drinking water. It's terrible. I am 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 I am